All right. So, uh, have you guys seen the concert upstairs? Has it started already? Okay. Uh, Sebastian is here, Sebastian Malaka. He will talk about event driven architecture. He has an awesome audience today. Where are they now? Uh, <laughs> where did they go? Where is Isabel? <laughs> she was just here on the stage. She's yeah. on the very end. <laughs> okay, yeah, she's chasing all around. So if you see a small. She child, already heard that few times. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> she, she got bored. <laughs> so if you see a small child running around, that's his daughter er, learning to be a, the next speaker at HipCon. <laughs> so, Sebastian, take it away. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, hope you enjoy uh, Hip HipCon. I just came here, so after the talk I have to walk around and see how it, everything goes. Uh, as I said, today I will tell you about event-driven architecture, about events. Why is that? This is somehow related with my passion. I'm a person who really loves the quality of the software. But not only the quality in the understanding of the code, of course it's also important, but I'm, but I'm talking about quality at all. So f starting from user through the BAs, project managers, still the developers and testers. If all those people are happy, that's what I'm calling quality. This that means that so, uh, our written application by us has a qu high quality. Code is one of the items in it. And how, why events? Because events helps me with keeping this quality. Why is that? Events come, developers start using events, but they were there before even we thought about them. Uh, be in business, they were using business events, business flows, they all rely on events. And after, the, after some time, developers decide to use this, use this approach because we mostly cooperate with the business, we, mo we mostly try to fulfill their, their requirements, and they, then we grab those events, they were always talking about those processes, flows, and so on and so on, the activities where money are, and we put that into the code. That's the first thing that I like in events, because in the code, I've got a business, I've got the understanding, I've, the, I've got the knowledge. Everything that my customers are talking about, I can look at my code and it's there. There is a flow, there are the names, there are all the things that really happens. Second thing, if you are building event-driven architecture, then uh, all your acti most of your activities are triggered by events. What does it, what does it mean? The items are extremely tiny and uh, not couplet with other functionalities. They are oriented on, on one thing. You really fast can, the, can find out what is triggering particular action and what is the result, the result on, the, on, the, on this action. This is small, so it's extremely easy to refactor, even if the code is shitty. It's extremely, uh, extremely uh, easy to do. And also you can find what is triggering this action, what what is the output of the uh, what, what is the end of this of the, on this beha behavior? You can go going through the events. You can build the flow, build build, build the business, understand the business your customer are talking about, even before you will start to talk with them. Code is enough. That's why I look look at the events and I started to use them. Except that uh, I'm blogger, speaker, I'm trainer and consul consultant, I'm software developer, uh, tech lead, architect, I'm helping people to, uh, whenever there is no quality in the code, I'm happy to help. Um, okay, before we will go to the event-driven architecture, unfortunately there will be no code, because uh, to, um, to understand the code you need to know the theory and the library itself, uh, but uh, seems, uh, just theory is, from my experience, it's not enough. So I will use some domain, hopefully you are more or less um, aware of. So this is, we will talk about some continuous integration tool. So there are a few concepts, uh, pull request or merge. Uh, so whenever we are creating a new pull request, whenever we are merging the code to existing pull, pull request, this is our entry event. This is something that triggers our action. Starting, this is, this is from, from where our talks, our conversation will start. Okay, few 
uh, definition you need to you need to know. So build is uh, any run er, any execute ex executed job that um, mm, completes eventually, and the result of it is either succe success. So we got it here, green. Oh. Okay, it, it doesn't work. So it's either green or failure red. Uh, builds can be various, so static analysis, uh, unit test, system test, integration test, and, the, and so on and so on. Except that we've got a pipeline. What the pipeline is? Pipeline is the set of builds, builds of the various categories. So we can, you can understand it as uh, build that uh, runs um, static analysis, then build that runs unit test, integration test, and system test. This is our pipeline. Also, I will use the shortcut, shortcut builds. What that's, what builds means, this is a set of execution of one particular build and the result of it. So that's mean for each pull request, I've got system, uh, sorry, static analysis, analysis that was green. Then after another merge into this pull request, I've got static analysis that becomes red. And after another uh, commit, I, I'm, I'm seeing I did, I, that I didn't fix it, so it's still the right. Builds are one category of the builds with a history of the statuses. Okay. Uh, one feature that I will talk about a bit, I will only refer to, is performance analysis, and uh, it will, uh, we will look at the uh, situation when build is not completed. Thanks to that, thanks to this short, tiny domain, uh, hopefully I will be able to explain you how events works. Also, there, is also, uh, there will be uh, uh, some uh, events related to notifications, what will happen when build is failing, performance is degrading, and we have a dashboard. What dashboard is, it will, uh, this is the functionality that will show us the status of the particular pipeline, whether it's fine or not. Okay. To what event processing is. In the essence, there are three things that happens in event processing. This is consumption of the event. Uh, so I'm consuming all the events that triggering my functionality. Another thing is operating over the event. So whenever, mm, whenever I have to send a notification, this operate is building an email, for example. What is triggering sending a notification? I would like to let know developer that who create the pull request uh, each time when his ba builds are read. So my trigger is build failed. Okay, I'm consuming this event, and based on that, I'm creating this email. I'm sending this email to the um, to the um, to the author of the code. Also, to consume something, there have to be some other place, other component that will publish this event. From time to time, consum consumer is publisher as well. So whenever I'm consuming an event, I will also pub publish something. It's not always the case because on the very end, we will have a consumer that will be end of the flow. But in many cases, this is the, uh, this is the situation. Also in application, we may have this initial publisher that is triggered by something and then publishing an event. What event-driven architecture is? So events, we need a couple of things uh, to talk about event-driven architecture. First are events. Events is everything that happened. This is already made decision, already saw activity, already noticed, uh, noticed thing. This is an event. Event happened. Uh, I cannot modify the event. I cannot change the event. This is a past. And events uh, are uh, in IT, and not only in IT, in business also are somehow visualized. Those are, uh, and the, the name of visualiz visualizing the event is event object. Why we've got the separation between events and event object? Because we are not interested in each, in, in each and every event. So whenever this is the event I don't want to react on, maybe I won't create an event object. What is even object? This is visualization of it. It can be JSON, it can be XML, it can be an object, whatever that holds data. We've got two, di two different types of events, system and business. Business are the one that we are mostly interested in, so those are the one we are talking with business about. This is the business flows and so on. Uh, business events are those events that exist 
even without our application. Business already had them. They, we are just helping, the, helping to faster react over them and maybe do some, ki some, some kind of analysis, recognition, and so on and so on. But once we start, once developers start to use business events, there are also system events. What does it mean? Some exception happens, something that didn't exist without our application. So it's strictly related to the implementation itself. Event-driven, this is a way of triggering some component. We've got a couple of popular uh, triggers. So this is a request. I'm the user, I'm sending the request, and functionality is triggered by my request. Another clock, timer, so some, something like cron job. And also we've got events, uh, event driven, uh, event triggered uh, functionality, like the notification I mentioned before. And what is event driven architecture? This is an application that mostly rely on components that are triggered by events. So it's not like everything is triggered by events because there is this UI that uh, users are talking with. And there are some cron jobs eventually, and there are various services not uh, triggered by events, but if all the mm, most important business activities are, are, are covered within an event-driven components, then we are talking about event-driven architecture. Okay, there are a couple of principles of event-driven archi architecture. The most important, so this is, this is the list. As an as a essence, is like event is not aware of what will pick this event. Event is only aware of situation that happened. So I'm publishing an event. Uh, organizers of HIPCON have an idea to organize a HIPCON. Yeah? Uh, so they create call for papers. So we've got an event, call for papers created. Did they know that Sebastian will send this, uh, send his speech to them? No, they were, they, they weren't. To be honest, they are not interested in particular people, uh, particular consumers of this event. They will just publish the event. So call for papers was created. Mm, that also means that event doesn't give you information about what will gonna happen with it. Uh, referring to this call for, paper, call for purpose created. There are couples of activities. So maybe some volunteers starts to publish some posts on Twitter, Facebook. This is an activity that was triggered by this uh, call for papers uh, uh, created event. Uh, speakers, will send their send the, uh, talks, and so on and so on. So there are various activities that will be triggered by this event, but trigger doesn't tell you what will gonna happen. It's not like call for papers created and speakers will gonna give, uh, give us some, uh, uh, give the, share, share with them, share with us their talks. Uh, another thing, we are all, always reporting current events, something that already happened. We are talking about activity. And if you are publishing the event that already happens, we, we are also reacting over them right now. Sometimes there are windows, so I'm waiting for 10 occurrences of this event. This is not like po delaying a reaction over the event. No, I'm simply interested in a couple of those events or some calculation, averages, and so on and so on. So yeah, that happens but this is only condition over the reaction. Okay, so some more theory. Uh, I think it's the last one. Event processing networks. So I told you that there is uh, consumption, it happens in consumer. There is operation, it also happens in consumer. And this, there is publication, and it happens in produ producer. But as I told you, we may have various consumer uh, of the event, so we need to have something from to which we can subscribe, and this is a channel. Producer is publishing, so you can treat it as, I don't know, topic. Uh, producer is publishing there, and there are plenty of subs subscribers that can uh, take, this, take this event and react over that, decide what they will gonna do, do with that. Produce, producer is not aware of a consumer. Consumer, of course, are triggered by the event. Consumer can also uh, consume events from various places. There is no problem, no problem with that. This decision, what they will gonna do with the event, uh, is on their side. 
However, sometimes this is not as simple as this. We've got something which is called event processor. This is like a tiny component that will enrich, transform, and even into something that we really want to work with. Let's assume we are receiving a, a I don't know, XML from, uh, from some external sources. They are sending the XML to us. Okay, XML, this is not a form of the uh, events we are working with because our, I don't know, we made a decision that each and every event is JSON. This is the place where we can do the tra transformation. Also, uh, within this XML, we can have an ID, for example, or, I don't know, token of the user. And within our application, we really would like to have a user name, a user logger, or something like that. So we can, in, th in this event processor, we can enrich this event, and then we are publishing it further. So with this event processor doesn't have any logic in, in it, it's only changing this event into something, into some different fro fro form. So change one event object from external source or external publisher to the event object we, are, we want to consume. Okay, some rules about events. As I said, events are about happening. Events are about past. Events are, are the information about something that happened. Well, and all those things that are here are the uh, outcome of those rules. So if it happened, it, can, it cannot be mutable. Past, we cannot change the past, at, at, at least not yet. So events are immutable. Another thing, event brings, our, brings us information. There is no logic in the event. There are only information. There are only data, da data there. So looking at that, you can treat uh, an event as something like a combination of value object, because it's immutable, and data transfer object, because it gives you only information. Also, uh, uh, an event can have more information that you really need. Why is that? Because event producer of the event doesn't know what consumer will gonna use. That's why it's better to publish everything that you think may be used somewhere later. Uh, one more thing. Uh, even though it looks simple, uh, this is the hardest part of event-driven architecture, to understand what the event really is. And the rules I will mention later about publishing the event how many of those we should publish, the naming conventions, may help you to, de to, de to make a decision whether this object is really an event or I'm just naming that, uh, naming this object like that. The few, uh, few, two things about uh, event names. First thing, always past, send, uh, past tense. Pull request created, not creating pull request. These, our version uh, control system, so this is this, external producer, producer. Uh, when I was talking about our do domain, I told you this is our trigger. So that, this is some external s service that will send, us, send this event to us. It has to be something like pull request created, at least in our application, because if it's external application, they really can send, uh, I don't know, JSON status, XML status, and it can really be named as report. But we should convert, into some in, we should convert that into some event. Why is that? XML means nothing. If I will tell you, okay, we'll, we receive an XML, I, I can bet a couple of you already are consuming XML in your application. Maybe, maybe you are publishing. Does it mean you are consuming or publishing event? No, this is only a format. Uh, I can tell, okay, this is not an XML, this is a report. This is some kind of status. Okay, I can say it, but this is not, not enough. Because this is still too, too blur, too white, the concept itself. Event, the name of the event, gives you business information. If I, we are creating continuous integration tool, and I will have something which is named pull request created, I'm just, and the new joiner will join my team, I, I will uh, simply tell them, okay, this is our code, those are the events we are uh, publishing, those are consumers and publisher, you can simply don't don't look at the don't don't look at the internals. Simply connect dots. This event is pu published here, and consumed by the, uh, by those consumers, and so on and so on. Thanks to such naming convention, event names will tell 
you a story. We tell you a story of the business. <coughs> and creating pull request uh, is misleading because it tells you that, okay, we are in the middle of the operation. Another thing, I mentioned that before, but just to visualize that, event is about this part. Producer. Producer did something, so they publishing the event to tell us what they did. It's not that producer is aware of what we are going to do with the event, so they will tell us, okay, so build started, or start the build, or starting build, because my producer already knows that we will going to start the build based on this event. Why is that? Uh, first, we, you, are losing the, uh, you are losing the information. You, you lose the information that pull request was created. Second, the story is a little bit broken. Okay, but it can be challenged. To be honest, it's moving a bit. Uh, the main disadvantage is what if someday I will decide that after pull request is created, I won't only start a build, but I'm trying to create some statistics of the developer's productivity, of the way how they are writing the code. I want to check how projects are growing, and so on and so on. So I'm creating yet another consumers that d won't only start a build, but will do something different. With the name of the event build started, I will need to know that build started really tells me what will happen here, not what happened there. Okay, another thing about event, how many data? Uh, I had a plenty of talks with uh, my fellow developers that events should contain events sh events should be small. It's it's not true. If you will go through, if you will re read a couple of books about that, if you look at the event-driven uh, architectures, how they are implemented, events gives you all the information you may need. Events give, events brings all the information about happening. And there are a couple of info information in the event, a couple, a couple of categories. It's event data, so uh, if, um, if, I, if I want to publish the event that build is completed, what, what can be there? There are some information about uh, the build environment itself. So what was the operation system it was running on, what type of uh, test I was running there, what, what is the host uh, uh, IP, and so on and so on, so, uh, and so on and so on. So this is some rough information. Except that we've got state data. They are not always there. So getting back to the my build completed, what, what state, state I, have, I can have her, there? I can have an information whether the build is successful or failure. So this is a state. Over the state I can, uh, even the data are used for some kind of analysis. I don't know, I can, ch I can check how, uh, how I'm utilizing my hosts. So I can collect all the information about the build, uh, I, I can collect all build completed events, I can group all tests that was run on particular host, and I can tell that maybe it's not balanced appropriately. This is something that I can do only with event data. With state data, I can do something more. Uh, I can react over that. If, if build is failed, I can have a different reaction. So I can send a notification to the author. Hey Amen, you did something wrong, you should fix it. If build is green, I can either trigger another build or I can send the information to the reviewer. The, this pull request is ready to review. You can take a look at that. Another thing, reference, reference data. If you will start thinking about event-driven architecture, you have to know there will be tons of those, really a lot. When we were creating our first application, we really thought that we will end up with something around 30. It was a lot in our head. Right now, we've got, I don't know, more than 200. And it's not too much. To be honest, thanks to those events, we really can track everything, we really can understand everything, we really have all the scenarios there, on all the scenarios we are aware of at least. So what, does, what, uh, what is the reference data? Reference da data are the information that allows you to connect all the events in the flow. So pull request was merged. 
I've got information about particular pull, pull, uh, pull request there, so I know pull request name. Okay, it's triggering the uh, one build. I want to ref uh, I want to find out whether build the build will gonna complete it regardless, regardless the status. Once it will be completed, I would like to check what pull request it was referring to. So there should be an information that was that is passed through whole flow. And Allow, it's extremely great if you will debug the code, and you will, because uh, there are there are situations that you will connect the dots a little bit wrong, so it will tell you where uh, events go into the wrong direction, thanks to those reference data. Mm, you also can check uh, how many of the uh, how many of uh, mm, operation succeed, so flow was ended with success, flow was ended with failure, and so on and so on. Another thing, so those are, those are three category, categories that are extremely important from the consumer perspective and the developer perspective. From producer perspective, there is four, fourth category. To be honest, you shouldn't, whenever you are creating a, um, an event, it's not only about uh, looking at all consumers you will gonna have, list all the information that consumer one will gonna need, consumer two will gonna need, consumer three will gonna need, collect them and put all those information into the event and that's all. No, it's good to start from the producer perspective. What you really think is an essence there and put those information there. And then of course if, consu if consumer will gonna need some additional information and you are able to put it, uh, put it to, the, to the event because you know them, yeah, put it there as well. So there is no too big events. Events are give you, give, give you the, gives you the information about what happens. So whatever happened, those those information should be there. Uh, okay, views. I will skip it. Mm, okay, build completed. Uh, so there are situations when we are reacting over the, we are analyzing the state. So my build completed have, have got the status. There is some build analysis here, and based on the status uh, the, uh, from the build, I can det det uh, determine whether build failed or, or build uh, succeed. Another thing, uh, state change. So I told, told you about those builds. So I've got a static analysis that was read, then it's read yet again, uh, uh, that, that then after the commit still read, then after another commit it became green, so build was fixed. I can have a 10 events that build was built failed, but from the perspective of dashboard, it doesn't bring any information. Mm. So those events are the output of, of some analysis of group of the event. And another type of the events are the one, so here, we, here we've got the consumer of the builds fixed, here we've got a producer of this event. So build can be fixed if it was red and now it's green. It can be broken if it was green and now it's red. It can, there can be no change. If I've got a green build, then green build, then green build, then green build. Green build. And those type of events are tricky because it's hard to tell whether I should publish them or not because those are the types of the events I'm not interested with consumption. But the problem is I'm not interested yet. So what to do with, that, with them? I will cover that later. Okay, so now, now a bit about consumers and producers. So, something, that, something how it would, it's good to create, uh, create them, some rules you should uh, follow to make your consumers and producer, uh, producer responsible only on one thing. Uh, those rules also will help you to um, create, put into your code the flow. Okay, so fir first thing, uh, consumer are not triggered by particular event. Cons consumer can be triggered by uh, various event. Cons consumer is not a reaction of the particular set of data, so it's not chain of data that is uh, driving my flow. No, this is reaction over some, inform some events and data are 
in the event, but the event itself is the trigger of my con consumer. And as you can see, notification service. So I can send a notification whenever build is failing, whenever build's performance degraded. Those are the information that is the essence for me, and I really don't want to lo lose, the, lose it. I want to have an automatic alert in such case. So notification service as a, as a co co component have, a, have got one single responsibility. Whenever I would like to extend the notification, this is the place when I want to go. Whenever I want to, uh, my reaction of the, over the event should be a notification, this, this consumer should mm, consume this particular event. Great. Thanks to that, it's really easy to extend our application with new functionality. Uh, another information, not all events have to be consumed, uh, not, all, not all data have to be consumed by particular uh, consumer. In that case, of course, if in, in build failed, I can have an information about hosts, uh, uh, about particular uh, branch name, links, and so on and so on. And to be honest, I'm interested only in branch name and the, inform and the email of the user, and I want to send, uh, send, the, send him an information this build is failing, do something with it. On the other hand, with build performance, a similar set of data, whenever I'm creating ticketing service, then yes, I, I would like to have as many information there as, uh, as it's possible. So I would like to have information whether all the builds were run on one particular host. Maybe, um, maybe builds were run on different hosts and maybe, uh, maybe performance, de performance degraded because this last host is something that we should get rid of or upgrade or whatever. So we are consuming one and the same event, but we are using different type of data. There are few challenges with consumers. First, you are doing the same thing. And of course, when I'm putting a blocks like that, it's quite easy to, to figure it out, okay? What the, what the solution is. But when you are creating the code, when there are plenty of teams that are working on the code, uh, it hard to, uh, it's easy to lo lose the track. Uh, so what to do to know that your consumer is doing one thing? Whenever the job is done, ask yourself what happened. In that case, okay, Regardless what, what, uh, what I'm analyzing, I can say that builds were analyzed, build, build state were analy was analyzed, okay, and the notification was sent. He, on the bottom, I can say that I don't know the ticket was created, and notification was sent. If I'm using conjunction like uh, like and, that's mean that my consumer is doing too much, and. And of course, this is something you shouldn't do. This is how it's supposed to look like. So we should take out this notification service. This is not a problem that, let's assume this notification service is publishing email. This is not a problem that email is built in different way from build failed and in different ways for build performance. It's, of course, consumer is aware of the event it's consuming. It's, this is how it, how it works. I, I have to know on what I will react. However, the notification itself, the sending mechanism, and so on, the, the way how I will choose it, it's, it's one and can be also a big, a big part of functionality. Another thing, uh, it's our if conditions. So I can have a consumer that is uh, reacting over the build completed, and I told you about uh, status in, inside this build completed. It's either fail or succeed. And I can have an information there. Okay, so if it succeeds, do something. If something different, then do something different. If those are totally different operation, they are, total, uh, they are not touching a single one shared component, then we should go with something like that. Wh and how to See such, see such uh, situation. Uh, okay. Also, it's worth to ask, your, uh, ask yourself a question. Do I have an event here? Do, did I recognize something? Because this question doesn't have to be, uh, in, in my case, in this case when I'm showing you the mistake, 
I'm asking whether the build was, uh, was, suc uh, was successful. So I'm recognizing and based on those recognition, I'm doing totally different operation. But uh, it can be something like, okay, do I have already 10 builds like that? Because I want to aggregate them and pu publish some aggregated events. This, is th this kind of question tells me, okay, let's do something or wait a bit more. So there is no totally different, thi different things uh, that I'm doing. Th there are not two different events over which I'm reacting in totally different ways. And the same may happen in situation when we've got some kind of predicate before the consumer. It's also possible to externalize this predicate uh, before the consumer. So the one will get only the one uh, when status is completed. The second one uh, where will get those where uh, status was failed. The problem, you are losing information. You don't know what we just recognized. So this, this guy doesn't react over the build completed anymore. It reacts over something different, but there is no this information here. Also, if I would like to have a, another consumer that will, that will go also this path, through this path, I have to analyze the code. I have to understand it. Of course, developers that were uh, was writing the, uh, this code can be already somewhere else. So I have to dig into it, into that and rely on my I know guts, my understanding. I may or may not figure out what what happened here. Another. So this is first problem. Second problem: if I've got component like that, I can I can have an analysis. Okay, so. I'm counting all the builds completed I, am co I consumed. Let's assume there were 100 of those. Uh, how many builds succeed I, uh, I produce? 10. How many builds failed? 50. Okay, so first of course I can do, a, do an analysis over the events itself. Okay, it's great, that it's, not, it's, uh, it's a bad situation that I've got more build failed rather than succeed, but I've got 10, out of 100 completed, I recognize 10 that succeeded, succeeded and 50 that failed. What happened with others? With something like that, they will, gonna lose. They, they, they will be lost because there is no consumer there. Here, I can really, really find it extremely easy. Uh, what can happen? Build can, com build can be complete, marked as completed, for example, with execution is done, but there was some job execution problem. So exception during the execution itself, not during the test. So build was not marked as failed. There was some technical issue. And it's not there. Okay? Great. I, w I will see that. I can find it. And I can see that this is ni neither n not a build succeed nor uh, build failed failed another uh, side of the coin our produ uh, producer so those that are feeding us mm, first thing uh, producer can uh, publish various events it's not that, uh, the the same situation like as with consumer consumer can uh, consume many of events, different events. Producer can publish di various events. The difference is that consumer can uh, consume events totally from different area. Okay, performance degrada degraded, build failed, uh, review re uh, code uh, code, uh, code after review re rejected, and so on and so on. Those events that co consumer is consuming doesn't have to be related. Those that producer is publishing are related. This is, and this is the outcome of some operation over the input that triggered uh, the producer, regardless whether, whether it was event, trigger, request, or clock, whatever. Th this, is, uh, this is the outco outcome of it. Another thing, produ producer always creates one event. Within the operation, and this is how we are verifying whether my component is, isn't too big. If I'm doing one action, I can say, okay, this is what happened. This is not like this happened and this, and eventually this. 
only one thing happened. That, that's why producer always publishing one thing. If I, need a, I have a need to publish more, uh, more events, then most probably I'm in this situation. This also can be a producer. So ticket created, notification sent. In that, in that case, if I really think it worth to send two events or more, that that's mean that I should split it. Okay, if you will vo violate this rule, then uh, it will be harder to find out this place you have to modify uh, whenever functionality will be gonna change. Uh, it will be harder to find this place with which you have to connect when, whenever you want to add yet another consumer, producer, whatever. And it will be harder to understand the flow because uh, some, sometimes branches, w branches of the path within the producer itself uh, will grow, will grow within a time. Because for some situation, I will send this notification. For, for some event, I will send the notification under, under, o only under some condition. For another type of the event, I, will, I won't never send this notification because it's not applicable and it will grow, grow, there will be more ifs there, and it will be harder to understand it. Uh, okay, another thing, pu published event can depend on the history of the event. So this is the situation with the builds. If I had a build failed, okay, builds are broken. If I'm receiving yet another build failed, builds not change. Even though the event I received is exactly the same, uh, the difference can be only within a timestamp. I'm publishing different event. Then I'm receiving build succeed. Okay, build is fixed, and yet another build succeed, and the result is build not change. So producer can analyze the history or history of the events because events, thanks to events, we really can go through this histo history. We can analyze the past and we can. Uh, makes, made some decision relying on it. Okay, so dur during the talk, I think this, this is quite uh, obvious right now that most of the producers are also consumers and vice versa. Of course, there, there is usually this first producer that is it either triggered by some external service, some request, some cron job, whatever. Uh, and also there is this last consumer that is not publishing anything or is just simply storing information into some persistent uh, persistence uh, layer because this is end of the flow. But in event-driven architecture, most of your consumers will, um, will be both producers and consumers. Uh, also tricky part, and this is all related with it, if you will try to draw connection between consumers and producers and the events that are uh, published, you can be really terrified when you, when you will gonna see, because it looks like chaotic web. So it's worth to, if you would like to visualize what really happens within, with your application, it's better to be focused only on um, one thing, what the, what the thing is. It's either business process so I, I could draw a situation. What can happen with my builds when I'm receiving pull requests? Okay, I'm receiving pull requests. Static analysis is triggered. I'm talking about the first situation is a, a, a sunny day scenario. So static analysis succeed. Another succeed, another succeed, another succeed. Completed, send notification to the reviewer. And I can create another scenario, another scenario, another scenario. Uh, if you won't be focused on the scenarios you, and you really would like to try to put everything on one picture, it will be too huge. Mm. Okay, and challenges with the producer, the same, the same here. Uh, so what happens when I, I'm starting to think, similar situation uh, that we had with consumers. So in consumer, we also had this blog in the, uh, b block below, and here we've got build failed. Mm, also, there is block below, recognize failure. We are here, we are 
rea reacting over build trigger. Here we are reacting over build completed. Here we've got some analysis, build completion, build state, and we are publishing one one and the same event. When you are when you've got two or more producers that creates uh, the same event, that means it's wrong. That means you should there there is some logic that is maybe not written in the same way, but responsible of doing the same thing, you should take it out and put put on site. Like in here. So build completion uh, means that um, build, state, build state analysis, okay, so build job was completed and I've got the status. Either it's, uh, succeed, uh, either it's success or failure, so either it will be build fail or build succeed. Uh, here, build completi completion anal analysis. Uh, from time to time, I can uh, create a clock that will check whether my build uh, builds, I don't know, VMs, containers are done with it, with that job, because I shouldn't allow to uh, let my um, builds run infinitely. It should be, I don't know, I should say, should, say, should have some deadlines for it. So whenever I'm finding this de deadline, I'm publishing yet another event. So build not finished, build completed, and we've got build state analysis that is producing information that, yes, this particular build, build was failed. What does it give us? Information. We've got, we've got the flow. Uh, okay, I'm almost done. I'm, I'm, out of, I'm, I'm out of time, but I'm almost out of slides, so it's good. Uh, okay, that was covered. So whenever you are publishing two events, you should also split it. If there is an end conjunction here, if it's end, if I want to publish this and this, that means that, there, that, that, mean that two things happened, or two or more things happened. If it's this or this, then, then it can be fine. If those builds are uh, operating over one and the same event, if, if, if they are the part of the same story, but this is a uh, sunny day scenario, this is rainy day scenario, it's still fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is the, this is the challenge. Uh, I, mentioned my, I mentioned before, what if there is an event I don't, I don't want to re react on? The problem with this event is, as I told you, you don't know whether in future you wouldn't like to react on it later. If you won't, if you won't publish it, you will lose all the past, all the history. You cannot rerun it uh, anymore. In, in some cases, you, can, you cannot get it back. Mm, on the, so this is a drawback of not publishing it. On the other hand, you don't have a 100% guarantee that someday you will consume that. So you can keep them somewhere it will cost you a memory, disk space, whatever, and it can be in vain sometimes. Mm, unfortunately, I don't have a good, a good answer on uh, this. Uh, what we are do doing where, whenever we are finding an event like that, we are asking ourselves, what is the risk if I will need to consume this event? What, what will be a drawback of it, of not having the history? If the drawback will be too big, then, okay, we are uh, starting to collect that. But, and this is some contradiction to I, what I told you before, because I told you that events should have all the information there should be, that we can publish. In such case, we should, during this analysis, we should find out all the information that brings a risk there and put it into the event and then keep it. If the risk is not too big, Simply don't keep it. Uh, okay, so to be event driven or not to be. I, I really would like to convince you to try it because what you, what you are getting for free without even thinking, uh, thinking about that. You've got business knowledge in the code. You don't have to talk with your customer to understand the uh, domain you are working with. You don't need to ask your uh, colleagues that are already in the different project the information are always there. Uh, your communication with the business will be simplified, with consumer, pr product manager, and so on. Why is that? Mm, because you will talk the same language, you will use the same language, there will be no mapping in your head. You will catch all the not known term extremely fast. Separation of concern, this is something I mentioned, so you've got all those 
producer responsible only for one thing. That, thanks to that, we, they are also low, lowly coupled and highly cohesive. And thanks to that, we can easily refactor them. We can easily change them. If they are not performant enough, we can grab them and rewrite, because this is small. Uh, and it's also easy to add and remove feature, because it's a matter of connecting the, the dot, publishing an event and consuming it. But there are three things that, unfortunately, you have to be aware of. There will be a tons of components. There will be even more events. And monitoring is something you really have to, uh, you, you really have to have. You need to find an anom anomalies. You need to find when you are losing an event, you are not reacting over the event, and so on. OK, what next? There are a couple of books I recommend, uh, recommend you. I will send it to, t uh, I will put it on Twitter so you can uh, take it from there. And yeah, if you've got a question, I will be here. So thank you very much.